Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So fortunately had some good weather after work. So I was able to hurry up and mix up some primer. And uh, as you can see behind me, finally got the C10 cab in its final primer. And uh, overall, I think it turned out pretty good. I think uh, we're good to go from here and get this thing wet sanded out. So I want to show you guys, before I lose the light, I've got a pretty good reflection here I can show you. So this is the back of the cab that I had to do some pretty uh, extensive body work back here to get it flat. And right here as well. And hopefully that shows up that uh, in that final primer, it is pretty flat. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, yes, there's a couple runs in there. Uh, I did have to kind of hurry towards the end, the wind was starting to pick up. And so I kind of laid it on thick in some areas. So if you see a few runs, that's why. No big deal though, those, uh, those can be sanded out really easily. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. Yeah, another run. But happy with how this turned out. This is gonna sand out nicely and hopefully the paint job turns out really, really well. I'm gonna give you guys kind of a walk around the cab here too. Kind of give you an idea of how it looks. I'm very happy with it. I've got to be uh, got to be honest. Normally, I'm really uh, picky about stuff, and I kind of pick stuff apart, especially my own work. But I got to say, overall, pretty happy with it. So, gonna go ahead and get this. Uh, actually, first, uh, normally what I like to do is something like this, especially where I've got uh, some heavy coats of primer on it is I really like to let it actually bake out in the sun for at least a day or so. Um, these newer primers, they're not supposed to really shrink much when they dry, but I don't like to take any chances. So after I do a large primary like this on a nice day where the sun's out, and it's about 80 around here this time of year, I like to actually let it sit out in the sun and bake in the sun. And then I'll bring it in and uh, put the guide coat on and start sanding. So if the weather is decent tomorrow, and which probably is, it's probably going to be more wind. But if the weather is decent, I'd like to get this outside and let it bake for oh, at least three or four hours. And then uh, again, get the guide coat on and start sanding. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so when I do the final sanding, I'm actually going to do kind of a step-by-step -step and a tutorial as well as when I go along to this to kind of give you guys an idea how I do it. Just because this step is kind of the one of the most critical. Um, this is your final sanding before your base and clear goes on. So this is what the base and clear lays down over. So if there's any flaws in this, it's going to show up in your final paint. So in my opinion, it's one of the most critical steps before your final paint. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, again, I'm going to get this uh, sprayed out in a light coat of a guide coat. I'm going to go get some flat black and spray on there. And then the next step is going to be using my long boards, uh, my 18 and 12 inch board, to do some dry sanding on the top of the cab. And then also on these areas right here that uh, are the flattest part of the cab that I had some issues trying to get it perfectly flat. So for these two areas right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 18 inch board with some 320 grit on there and I'm gonna sand it dry. Just gonna go over it lightly. I'm not gonna cut too deep. And then after that, when I know that it's all nice and flat and I don't see any high or low spots, then I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting away with uh, wet sanding with some 400 grit. And then also up here on the top of the cab and on the very top of the cab, I'm gonna just use my 12 inch block for that. It's too curved to use an 18 inch block, so that will be done with a 12 inch and 320. And uh, what I should probably point out too is 90% of all this primer is gonna get cut away. So um, 
in the end, what I should actually end up back to is pretty close to where I was before I laid the primer on. This will just alleviate pretty much any pinholes left and um, any low spots should be taken care of with this final coat. So in the end, it's probably gonna end up looking a lot how it did before I laid the primer on, at least it should, except for there should be absolutely no low spots left at all. One thing I also need to mention too is I'd like to make one correction for my previous video. Um, I said that my gun was a two millimeter tip. It's actually a 2.5 millimeter tip. So a two millimeter tip works fine. I prefer the 2.5, especially with this K36. It's pretty thick stuff. It is a high build. And so it is a little bit harder to spray out of a finer tip than uh, a coarser tip. So um, some guys might like a two millimeter. I prefer the 2.5 shooting that type of primer. Okay, I've got the guide coat sprayed on here. And this actually looks thicker on camera, a lot heavier, I should say, than it really is. But this is about how thick I like to put it on. Some guys don't like to put it on this thick and just like to mist it on there. Um, this is how I feel is a good in-between to where you can see it, but it's not so heavy that it's hard to sand off. Starting out here, got my 12 inch Dura block loaded up with some 320. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over this dry lightly, and then I'm gonna come back and start wet sanding with 400 grit. Um, and again, on the 12 inch block up top here, on the top of the cab and right here, I'm gonna use the 12 inch block. And then down here and here, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my 18 inch block. And again, when sanding this, you just wanna apply even pressure on both sides of the block with both hands and just sand diagonally, keep moving, and then come back and start sanding diagonally again the other way. And where this panel is curved, you actually wanna roll as you're sanding, roll with that diagonal motion, kind of back and forth. And same with the top as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the top and uh, the back of there with uh, my block and kind of come back and show you guys what it looks like after I sanded that with uh, the dry block. Okay, so after about a half hour of sanding, this is where we're at. And I need to point this out as well. So I've got a little bit heavy on my primer. And so you'll notice when I sprayed the primer, I sprayed this way, front to back. And you'll notice this isn't because of body work. This is actually just because the way I laid the primer on, I didn't do a very good job of laying it on. So that's why you see these stripes in here. And because of that, when I sand, I will sand laterally this way. So the, the widest part of the block goes across the way I laid the primer on. That way, I'll get a nice flat surface. If you try to sand it this way, you'll chance of rolling over that, and that's kind of a drastic way of putting it, but if you sand perpendicular to the way you laid the paint on in this instance, you're guaranteed to get a flat surface. And uh, I've still got a little ways to go with sanding this down with 320. So this is all going to be cut out. That's not a problem at all. There's a few spots on here that will definitely be removed as well. As you can see, it's starting to cut into these low spots. So those will come out. This one right here, I think will come out as well. That's about the only one I'm really concerned about. Come down to this part of the cab and as you can see, this is starting to cut into, that will be taken care of. Otherwise, we've got a nice super flat area and then one more spot right here. That has already started cutting into, so that will be taken care of as well. So this will end up being a super nice flat panel. I'm very excited how that turned out. And then you come down here, I just kind of hit this lightly to show you guys. Um, across here, it looks like it's all gonna turn out well. One spot right here, but I think that will be taken care of. And then this piece right here, not as critical because the bed actually sits from here down. So while I want this area to look nice, um, basically from this point down and from here in, 
while I'd like it as flat as possible, it's not going to be super critical. Uh, example right here, this spot, if I can get in good light, this spot will probably be a little bit low, but you are at least three or four inches in from where the bed sits. So you will probably never see this. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, coming down here, the rocker panels, that was another problem area. Again, I just lightly hit those and those are going to turn out super flat as well. And the last spot that I'm hitting with a long block is this rocker. Again, I just went two directions with it really quickly and this will all cut out nicely. As far as most of the rest of the areas, you know, all of the curves, corners and stuff, I'm going to have to uh, do that mostly by hand just because of all the complex curves. Kind of explained that in uh, one of the previous videos. And then when I get to it, I will explain to you guys how I do these edges where you have body lines. It's kind of super critical how you sand these just because if you don't do it right, you won't have a really nice crisp line. So when it's time to get to those, I will show you how I do those as well so you get good crisp body lines. And then you're probably wondering why I'm leaving it masked up. Well, there's two reasons for that. One is in case I actually have to hit it with a little bit more primer in a few areas, I don't have to remask it. It'll just be a quick, easy, you know, one, two. The other is when I wet sand, it'll just keep a lot of the water flowing outside the vehicle. Um, just try and keep the inside as dry as possible. So I'm gonna leave it on just for the uh, wet sanding purposes. So I'm gonna keep sanding these flatter spots with my 12 inch block and the 320. And I'm gonna keep sanding these uh, until I get rid of most of these other areas. I've got a pretty good idea how far to go. I've got two thick coats of primer on most of the cab. Um, these problem areas, I did do three coats. So there should be plenty of primer here for me to work with to sand through. Um, but just to give you an idea, you know, even your spray pattern in your gun, uh, this gives you an idea how just little it takes to have the difference between a flat surface and an uneven surface. And again, with black, it's super critical that this has to be mirror smooth. So again, if uh, you guys are doing a solid color, you know, red, black, white, uh, a lot of guys will just stop at wet sanding with a 400 grit on here. Um, if you're doing a metallic, definitely you wanna go down to a 600 just because that difference in grit can be the difference in how your metallics lay down. And uh, you definitely wanna go down to a 600 if you're doing a metallic uh, base on here, so. Some of you might be wondering why I left this body seam on the back of the cab. Um, the main reason I did that was just because time. Uh, some guys will fill this. Um, probably the best way though is actually to weld it. And to weld the seam takes a lot of time and you have to go really, really, really slow. Otherwise you'll warp the top here just because this is the most likely to start moving and flexing. So while some guys will fill the seam um, and professional shops will actually weld that up, um, again, I just wanted to save a bunch of time and not deal with it. And I also don't really mind how that seam looks. It's, it's not a deal breaker for me. So that's why the seam is there. And then for those of you, I think there were some comments, uh, why did I leave the drip rails? Um, same thing. It was kind of the difference between time and again, I don't really mind how the drip rails on these trucks look, so I decided to leave them as well. And anyone that's ever gotten rid of the drip rails or what I really like is if you leave, say, half of the drip rail, you cut the edge off and leave half of the drip rail coming out here and then body work it in or not necessarily body work it in, but you actually make metal pieces and blend it into the rest of the cab. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, I believe Martin Brothers did that on one of their trucks um, and it looked awesome. It did, however, take a lot of time and a lot of sheet metal work. And I'm not that confident in my abilities that I wanted to take that on. So 
I left it alone. I did, however, do something that some of you may or may not notice right here and right here on both sides. Uh, normally there's an actual body seam where three pieces of metal overlap right here and I welded those up and ground them out and then with what was left body worked them. Now, pretty much this is all metal though. This is very, very little filler right here. Um, the main reason I did that is you actually will not really see that unless you use flush mount glass. If you use flush mount glass, which I have not decided if I'm going to do or not, um, you would see that. You, you would definitely see that. Uh, otherwise, with the window and the factory rubber grommet, uh, most of that's covered. And honestly, why I spent the time to do that, uh, it might sound kind of stupid, but... The main reason I did this, well, I guess two reasons. One, so I didn't have to use any seam sealer here in these areas. And the other reason is it doesn't really matter if I use flush mount glass or if I use weather stripping, but it was just one more area that can leaks on these trucks. So if I end up using the factory glass with the uh, rubber grommet, it's one more area that will not leak. Um, I did have one truck in the past that did leak there and it caused some rust issues. So I'm kind of wanting to alleviate that. And if any of you guys know what this hole is for in the back window on the driver's side, please let me know in the comment section. I really would like to know why they put that there. There's not one on that side, but there's one over here. So if you guys know what that hole's for, would you guys let me know? That's kind of a, I don't know, it bothers me. I'd like to know what it is. Thanks. So that last bit of montage footage of doing these two little inset panels on the back of the cab, just kind of want to do that to show you guys like how long it actually takes to do it. That was about 20 minutes time just to do those two little inset pieces. And now I do realize, you know, obviously from about right here down and from about here in, you're, you're really not going to be able to see very well and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's covered by the bed. I'm still doing the body work and painting it like it's a completely visible panel just because I want it done right, just because that's the type of person I am. So moving up to the top of the cab, it's all done. And when I say done, I mean it's been blocked out with 400 grit. I'm gonna come back and do this whole thing again uh, kind of quickly with 600 grit, just because it's gonna be painted black. I just wanna make sure there's no, there's just no mistakes made. So uh, while most people would stop at 400, I'm gonna to go to 600 on this like I was spraying it with metallic. Now, the back of the cab, which had so many issues, is turning out really, really nice. And there was actually a very large dent right here that I had to metal work and used a little bit of filler. And that is turning out great as well. I'm super happy with how that turned out. The back of the cab is completely done. 
uh, the B pillar there down to the cab corners done, and then that rocker is done. Now, I did promise you guys I'd show you how to do body lines, and that's what I've got set up right here. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys how I sand out body lines just so you keep that nice, sharp, crisp edge. Now, most of this is obviously going to be in the metalwork, or if you have any filler, you, you would do this the same way as if you were applying and sanding down filler keeps it nice and sharp. But I also like to finish this um, this way in primer as well, just because it will alleviate any problems you might have with sanding too much on this edge and rounding it off in a spot where you're gonna see in the final paint. Uh, where you wanna end up with is nice, sharp, crisp lines like this. This is what you're going for. And I've already started doing this one as well. Um, actually, I'll, I actually did all these by hand. I didn't tape them up. Um, I've done them enough where, unless it's a very long panel line, I don't usually tape them, but I'm gonna do this just to show you guys how it's done. So again, fresh piece of sandpaper. This is 400 grit, wet dry. You just want the surface to be nice and wet. And basically, again, with the, uh, the crisscross pattern, and when I come down to here, I only use my finger and kind of roll it in that groove. And again, you're watching with your guide coat to make sure you're cutting evenly, because you don't want to just do it in one spot. If you work too much in one spot, you'll have a low spot and it will definitely show up in paint. Um, if you're painting a very light color, like a white, you know, it's not as critical. White hides a lot, light colors hide a lot. But I do like to make sure and do everything like I was painting a dark color, especially something like this where it's going to be black. Because while this even might look perfect, I'm sure once I get this in final paint, there's going to be some spots that I'm going to be disappointed with. So while uh, if you were doing a white or a light color, it actually will hide a lot of, uh, a lot of small mistakes. I like to uh, prep everything out like I'm going to paint in dark color, which most of the stuff I do is dark just because I like darker colors better and where this is going to be black uh, it has to be as close to perfect as I can do. Now while everything might look awesome I'm sure once I get the final paint and get the black on there it will probably be a little bit disappointing to me because I'm sure there'll be some spots that I see that I'll end up missing. But hopefully it turns out nice, but we won't know that until the paint's actually on there. Okay, so as you can see there, the tape helped uh, guide the sandpaper to where you get a nice crisp edge. I'm going to give this one last wipe down just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. When you do a wipe down, you'll be able to see any black on the low spots from the guide coat. Looks like it looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the mask here. And now, work from the bottom up. In case you're wondering what was here, it was just a, a run I had and I just cut that off with a block earlier just so I didn't have to mess with it when I was doing the video here. Just remember to keep that sandpaper moving. Do not keep it in one spot for very long. That is about the best advice I can give you guys, is just keep moving. And then right here, I'm just basically trying to keep the sandpaper as flat as possible. And 
hit that top edge without going into the body line where that curve is right there. Now I'm sure some guys will say you can use a block to do this, but where this is curved this way and it's curved this way, um, it turns out better for me this way. If I use a block, I always end up cutting a low spot. If I do it by hand, usually I can get it pretty even. Now, if I was using a coarser sandpaper, like a uh, 220 or a 320, this would definitely go faster. But as I've said in previous videos, I'm, uh, I'm a little overzealous with sandpaper with the pressure I apply. And if I use a coarser sandpaper to do the finish stuff like this, uh, it'll always end up biting me. So I like to err on the side of caution and go a little bit finer than coarser when I'm doing the final. So now, nothing's left but that ridge. And with that ridge, I just like to come back and gently, with my finger touching the ridge, just cut the top of it off, going with the direction of the body line. And there you have it. That's how I do body lines. Uh, when I do some of the bigger panels, I will uh, definitely show that again what I'm doing the bed, the fenders, where they have a lot bigger body lines, but that'll give you an idea how it's done and how to, uh, how to keep that line nice and crisp. I have now sanded the entire cab with 400, um, at least on all the visible portions. I still have the firewall and cowl area to do, but as far as everything visible, um, including the rockers, the only thing I have found so far, if it'll focus on it, is this little pinhole right there. So, if that's the only pinhole I have, I'm very happy about that. That's an easy fix. Um, and actually, I will uh, show you guys or at least uh, give you the product I use for filling those right now. So for pinholes, I like to use this 3M Super Red Putty. Part number on there is 05099. And I don't remember, this is somewhere between $30 and $50 for this tube. Um, and if you're like me, this will last you forever. Well, at least till it's on the shelf for 10 years, dries up, you have to throw it away and buy a new tube. But on a project like this, I will use a very small amount of this on the entire truck. And for something like this little pinhole, uh, what I'd like to do to apply it, you can use a little mini squeegee. Um, a lot of times I just use a razor blade, put a little bit of mount on there and just swipe it on there. Fills the hole and then with the residual left over, you just hit it with sandpaper and it sands right off just as easy as primer. So one thing uh, before I finish up here on the video, uh, I'd like to just point out that uh, this whole YouTube thing is still new to me and deciding how to film, where to film, what to film is just kind of still up in the air. I'm kind of trying different things. Um, it's still really weird to me filming myself all the time. I, it's just kind of, it's, it's alien to me. But um, try to do the best I can. So uh, if you guys see me switching stuff up here and there, it's just because I'm trying something new and just trying to trying to determine what works best for me. You know, if I should do the selfie stuff or if I should put the camera somewhere and, you know, just film. Uh, be nice if I had a camera guy. That'd be great. But I don't yet. So, here we are. Okay, there we have it. Conclusion of another video. I know this was a long one. It was probably my longest one yet. Um, hope you stuck with me to the end. Um, gonna finish this out in 400 grit, and then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with 600 grit and get it ready for paint. Um, in the next video coming up, what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to do the seam sealer because that's the last important step between doing the final prime and sand and doing paint. And what I mean by seam sealers, I mean in like these drip rails right here, uh, where this has all been sandblasted out, 
this needs to have a fresh coat of seam sealer to uh, fill up that seam, as well as down here that you can't see between the cab corner and the rockers. Um, and also there's a bunch of areas inside the cab that where the seams that meet together, where it's been sandblasted out, that all has to be resealed. So it's a really important step, keeps, uh, keeps water out, keeps rust from happening. So I'll do a video on that as well. And then hopefully soon you guys will see how I put up a paint booth in the shop here and uh, show you guys how I paint. And uh, yeah, more videos to come. So if you uh, like what you saw and you learned something, you know, please subscribe. I appreciate everyone that subscribes to me. Thank you guys so much. And uh, if you like the montage of me sanding in the back of the cab, you know, the kind of fast forward thing of sand, 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 uh, post in the comments below. I always read comments and I try to respond to almost all the comments. So if you like it, let me know. I can definitely do more video of me sanding. Uh, if you think it's boring, don't want to ever see it again, let me know too. And then I just won't bother putting that in the videos anymore. So again, thanks again for watching guys. Have a great night, day, evening, wherever you may be. Until next time, see ya.